Okay guys, it's Mono making time and we're back on day two at Telford. Today we're going to have a look at some of the traders that are around the show and we'll have a look at what I bought today. Airfix always have a very prominent stand at Scale Model World and this year was no different. With the launch of their Ferret Scout Car Mark II in 135th scale, they were making quite a big fuss, having an actual Ferret Scout Car there as well, which you'll see a picture of me on later if you've already seen the community post I did on it. You can see the sprues here, and the kit has been generally very well received. Not that I expect anything less of an Affix kit these days. They had all the vintage classics surrounding this kit, which I thought was really beautiful, including the recently released Bombercraft, which I mentioned previously my friend Captain VFC did a really good video on. Here you can see three of the ferret cars assembled and all together in different paint schemes, and well, as I said, they had one there, so I had to get my picture next to it. What a cutie. <laughs> but following on from that, we need to talk about, well, I would say the elephant in the room, but the Gannet in the room. The Gannet in 148 scale is one of Airfix's other biggest launches of the year, and this is stunning. I never do 148 scale. I don't really have room for it, even after moving house. And yet, <laughs> this is still a tempting kit, guys. Honestly, seeing it both built and in the unpainted but still built fashion is phenomenal. The fact that you can do the wings in any configuration just absolutely astounds me. Keeping with the naval tradition, we've got the Sea King here as well. Now my friend Sully has done a video of this, actually one of an, an abandoned Sea King used as a coop. And if you want to have a look at that, check the link in the description below. But yes, the Western Sea King is an absolute beast of a model and looks fabulous until we can see more of Affix's, well, the less new but still exciting range of aircraft. We've also got the Avro Vulcan, the Black Buck version. Had some controversy upon its release, but we're not going to go into that. We're going to focus on all of the positives for this video, as we always try to do. The Spitfire from last year that featured so prominently. And next to that are the Airfix Club kits for the year. Now, we'll probably look at those more when they come out, but then there's something in front of it, isn't there? That's right, the Messerschmitt ME410, FX's newest release. I am so excited to get one of these. I've wanted to do an ME210 for a very, very long time since I had one as a kid, and the 410 was obviously the less death trap version of the 210, so I'm very excited to build it because I've always thought it was an absolutely stunning aircraft. But Airfix weren't the only manufacturer at the show, and we had representation from other manufacturers as well. Now this stand is a combination of different manufacturers, such as Tamiya, Dragon, and Atelier. Obviously I know nothing about vehicles, but the sprues look brilliant here. And Dragon's new range was represented as well. Again, it's not really something for me, but I saw a lot of people who looked really excited. But this, the M MZ202 Fulgore, the beautiful Italian aircraft is one of the showstoppers for me this year at Telford and I absolutely loved the diorama they had around it. I'm sorry if my image stabilization has cut some of it off but an absolutely stunning aircraft I'm sure you can all agree and I saw many people purchasing this at the show. This boat also caused a lot of fuss because it's absolutely ginormous with Tamiya next to him as well. Also a kit that I've had mixed reviews about, or kits, should I say, that I've had mixed reviews about for their F-35s. Tamiya are known for their accuracy, and I heard people actively criticising the accuracy of the F-35 kits they have, so that was interesting. But I've not really bought many Tamiya kits. Um, it's just not never fell into line for me, but I hope to do some in the near future. Now, something else I'm also considering doing at some point is building a car. I've never really built a car before, but when I see vehicles like this, T50, they look beautiful. I just, I really need to build one at some point. I just need to break that curse myself. Ravel will also show this year after being noticeably absent from last year's display. This year featured heavy, heavy reliance on 007 and Star Wars. Ravel are one of the manufacturers that really bridged the gap between model making and other hobbies such as puzzling and I guess more kid friendly approaches as well. And that can include things like, well, Lego, as we'll see shortly. The display was really beautiful. 
probably not as well laid out as some of the other manufacturers, but I did like that they tried to include absolutely everything. They also had their new release of the BF109 in a sort of Lego style or Kobe style, around the same price as the Kobe kits as well. But they had a lot to offer this year and it was really nice to see the display in full. Ravel are a manufacturer that cover a wide spectrum, from old kits to new kits, and having some new tools is something that I think a lot of people in the model making community will be very happy to see. Having a lot of brand partnerships as well with places like Star Wars that aren't just Bandai re uh, rebrandings, and also their James Bond stuff, which yes, some of that is just reboxings of older Ravel kits, but with James Bond colours, I think is nice and it's not always a uh, positive way to get new people into the hobby who perhaps haven't before. And of course, here's the A400, because I adore this kit, and I really need to build one at some point. I just... it makes a real old room, and I just need to get around to it. Yeah, I adored Ravel's display this year, quite frankly. And can we just talk about this Eurofighter? I love the ones they've done with all the amazing markings on them. <laughs> Traders are one of the other biggest aspects of Scale Model World 2023. When you enter the event, there are a lot of people who will run directly towards the traders, ignoring all of the beautiful displays that are there. That's why I guess I wanted to do a separate video on them, to have one that's dedicated purely to model makers around the world, but then I wanted to make sure I include traders because they are an important part of this as well. At Telford, we had many different stands from manufacturers, to, well, ones we already know, like models for sale and Hannets and Antics models, as we can see here. I picked up a couple of things at the show, and we'll go through that at the end of this video, but I wanted to take some time just to show the scale and variation of uh, sort of model suppliers that we have. There were so many scattered around, there was no way I was going to be able to film them all, in part because, well, <laughs> the Sunday was basically for me and my partner to just enjoy the show because I spent all of Saturday filming and I didn't want to go around filming everything all over again. I did try and make sure I included different uh, sort of sizes and types of uh, sort of vendors too. You can see that there are like, you know, fully built model kits for sale. Some of them are cash only. I'm never a huge fan of that, but I mean, it is what it is. Hannets are there, they had a massive display, and then you can see Jedlam right down at the bottom. And as we previously mentioned as well, we had places like Models for Sale 2, who are, well, I always end up buying something from them. <laughs> Edward had their display there too, and if you didn't buy from them on the Saturday, well, there was a lot gone for the Sunday. And Wonderland Models, a welcome site that we see every time at Telford, and also Riot 2. Then we has, I think this is Cosmo, and it's sort of a sci-fi aspect. <laughs> And yeah, here we go. Sorry, I thought I'd mention them earlier, but yeah. Models of sale, lots of random kits here. I've got so many bargains from here in the past. Hey guys, so temporary setup here. My old desk, but it's no longer mine and moved to a new place, but I'll have a new setup soon. But let's have a look at what I bought at Telford this year. I got three things from Mac this year. So, continuing my love of French aviation, these will probably pop up in French February, but we got the SO. 9050 Trident. We then also have the Luduk 021, the experimental ramjet. And then the one I was probably looking forward the most at the show was the SO6000 Trident. Now, this was the first French jet made um, indigenously. I think it flew around 1946 off the top of my head. So, really excited to get this built. I've been looking for this for ages. It's been going for like 40 to 60 on eBay and I got it for 20, so I'm really happy with this. On the cheap side, we've got a BI M2 and BI1, which was for 395. Really cheap kit, it's not necessarily the best kits in the world, but they rounded off my purchase when I was buying the uh, free French aircraft, and I mean, it's one to get me back into modeling anyway. Another one I've been looking for for ages is the Region 2000. This was used by Hungary, Sweden, and Italy. I've been trying to get this for a while. It's, I think, completely out of print now. Last time I saw one, there was one for a fiver. That was when I was at Boeington. I didn't pick it up, so getting this for a tenner, I was really happy to get it. And um, because they go for a lot more on eBay because supply and demand. I did also get some older Airfix kits. I got these Airfix Gurkha Infantry. 
I got these to go with the Jungle Outpost because I have been wanting to do a diet ramen for ages. I've been wanting to get the Jungle Outpost for ages and it was for a relatively good price for once. Again, another kit that goes for far too much. I actually really need to re-release these as vintage classics along with the Ford Command Post as well because these are really good intro dioramas. Fox is a bit meh, but I never really care about that. But yeah, so go for them. Hopefully some sort of diorama in the future. I went to Telford with my partner for the first time this year and um, they got some things as well. So we got some uh, samurai Japanese infantry. They said that I will be very neat. So I'll do these at some point. These are both of the Vesda infantry kits, which I understand are relatively okay. So I'll be doing these at some point in the future. We've also got HMS Hood. Uh, he's wanting to do a ship and it was cheap. I think it was like a fiver. A really, really old airfix kit. So this will be one of his first model kits and I'm really interested to see how it turns out. And well, some Gundam because they're really easy kits. These are really, really cheap in sort of a bargain box and he wasn't really sure where to get it. But I was like, well, these just snap together. They're really easy, really beginner friendly, really good introduction model kits, which is why Gunflower is so popular now anyway. So really happy to sort of see that he got this. And what scale model world without buying a couple of gifts. So my heart got this one of his friends, which is some FX Waterloo uh, British cavalry. This was not super cheap, but I mean, it's an old boxing. It's really well, like preserved in good condition. And uh, from what I understand, these look quite nice. I've seen them painted a few times. So yeah, that's a really good gift for his friend. And as we've been playing Japanese and War Thunder, I got him a Key 43. This is because we flew it a few times in War Thunder. I don't think this is exact model, but relatively similar. So I wanted to get him this because again, like it's a Fujimi kit. It'll be quite easy to put together. Japanese aircraft are always really easy to paint and fun to experiment with weathering with. So I got him this to do is probably his first aircraft. So yeah. That's it for my haul of Telford this year. Let me know in the comments below what you bought at Telford and if you got any absolute bargains this year. Thank you so much for joining me again. I know it's been quite a while since I last did a video. I'll definitely be back doing more videos in the future. Probably not one a week. It's not realistically feasible for me now. Balancing both my personal life and a happy personal life for once, I'm glad to say. And a happy work life. I'm putting YouTube around my life rather than doing my life around work and YouTube, which was the case before. So there'll be a whole vlog on this, um, hopefully relatively soon. But don't worry, I'm not going anywhere. I am back for good now. It's just not going to be every week anymore. But yeah, thanks for joining me. And well, thank you so much for liking the videos. Subscribe if you've not already subscribed. And I'll see you next week or the week after. See you then. Bye.